All right, my goal in this video is to show you some of the features of using the calculator um, for chapter one of our business calculus book. Um, if you take a look at section 1.1, the second example on the second page, it gives you an equation, which um, we're gonna plug into the calculator. So I'm gonna hit Y equals, and I'm gonna plug it in here, which is seven X squared uh, minus two X and minus three. And what we're wanting to do is we're actually wanting to put an input of x equals negative 3 into that calculator. Now a couple of things to just make sure that you've done already is we need to make sure our table is set up right. So if you'll notice right up here it says table set in blue. So it means you have to hit the blue button and then you hit the window button and it says table set. Your table needs to be set up to look like this. And what I mean is that where it says independent it needs to say ask and where it says dependent it needs to say auto. So if it's not like that already go ahead and change that. Once it's set up like that, there are two different ways you can use your calculator to evaluate part A, which is x equal negative 3. You can go into the table, you see it says blue table here, which you hit second table, and yours will probably be blank if you don't have anything in here. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to put in a value, so in this case I'm going to put in negative 3, and it tells me my output is 66. There's one other way to do this um, valuable for what we do later, and if you hit vars, vars means variables, we want a y variable, so y vars. We're working with functions, and we've got our equation saved in y1, and we can put the negative 3 in parentheses next to y1, and what it will do is it will use negative 3 as the x value and tell us what the y value would be, and again you see 66. So that's about it for section 1.1. Um, I don't think that there's anything that we need it for in one point, uh, toward the end of 1.2, using your tables to numerically estimate. So the very last example gives us an equation. So I'm gonna go in there, I'm gonna change my equation. It says six, um, it says natural log of 10 plus t. So anytime it has a variable, we're gonna use the variable x and we need it raised to the power of negative one, depending on your calculator, it might actually make this look like an exponent, and mine doesn't, but it might um, on yours. Oh, I opened it twice, didn't I? So let me go back and delete one of those. All right, so it's opened and it's closed. It says on your calculator, or on your example in your book, to start with, or in your notes, to start with t equals to 500. So we're gonna go into the table, and we're gonna put t equal to 500, and then it tells you to increment by 5,000, so, we take 500 and add to it 5,000, so that's 5,500. If I add another 1,000, I've got 10,500. If I add another 1,000, I have 15,500. And we can continue this process as long as we need. So the question in part becomes, how far do I continue this process? Well, we want it to be correct to three decimal places. Now, if we go over and we highlight on top of this, it actually looks, you can see the more decimal places down below. So this is 8167. 8156, 8155, 8155. So these last three are all 815 and then something after them, right? All three the same. And so we want three decimal places to match. 815, sorry, 815, 815, 815. It matches three times in a row for three decimal places. And then we're going to estimate it to that three. So it'd be 8156, because the 5555, five, 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 six here all would round up to 816. So this would be 13.816. Or if you round into two decimal places, it would be 13.82, um, depending on what you're asked to round to. So that's everything in, oh, in uh, section 1.2. Um, 1.3 does the same, simil same kind of a thing here. If you look at the second page of 1.3, it gives you some equations. I'll just use the first example. It has x squared minus 9 on top, so I need this in parentheses, x squared minus 9. Again, my calculator forces me to do it this way. Yours may actually look like it's um, putting it in a numerator and putting it in a denominator sort of horizontally with a vertical bar, with a bar between. <coughs> Excuse me. And then I have to put parentheses x minus three on bottom. Um, and then we go into our table. And in our table, we can actually put in all the values that we have in our notes, which is 3.1, 3.01, 3.001. At least three. Um, in the notes, I think I did four, so 3.0001. Um, and you can do the same thing with the 2.9s. And so this would be one of your tables. And then your other table, you can delete them out if you wish. You can do 2.9, 2.99, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.
2.999, 2. Point, and you can do four nines. But again, at least three decimals or three um, entries would be what you would want. And then we're looking at estimating what happens after that. All right, section 1.4 is the biggest component, and this is the last thing I'll do in this video. Um, is sec what happens in section 1.4 through the end of I think 1.11. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to take information and plug data in and it get it then it will actually create different equations for you fitting your data. So um, the third notes sheet in your packet for 1.4 actually gives all the instructions that I'm going to go through <coughs> and I'm going to use the data on the fourth sheet. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit y equals we're just going to clear this out and exit our screen which is second quit. And we want to put in statistical information. So this is under the stat menu. So you hit stat and it's edit. All right. Now I have data in here from other information. So I'm just going to delete it out. Notice I'm deleting on top of the data, not on the list. If you delete the list, let's say you delete the list and you're like, oh no, now I need my L1 back. There's an insert key. You can hit second insert and it inserts a blank column. And then you need to give the column the name L1. And if you see it down here, here's L1. So you hit second L1, press enter, all the information's back. Okay, so I'm going to delete the L2 list out right here. <coughs> and then we're going to enter the data. So it says years are 1994, 1995, and so forth. We never enter years in. We always align the data for years to the nearest, I usually do the nearest decade. So 1990 would be year zero. So 1994 would be four, and then five, six, seven, and eight. And then the amount in millions is 108, 122, 137, 155, and 169. So these are our values um, for L2. And what we're wanting to do in this particular lesson is to create a linear equation. Um, as you move on in this chapter, you'll create exponential equations and logistic equations and logarithmic equations. And all of those equations are actually in the same place. They're in stat, calc. Calc is in calculate. So you can see linreg, this is the one we're going to use right here in a minute, linear regression. You can see quadreg, that's quadratic regression. So that's a, like an x squared comp, uh, equation. Cubic regression, that's x cubed. We don't use quartic. This linear regression is just the same as the other one, so we don't need that one. ln is natural log, so we'd use the natural log regression. exp, exponential regression. And we don't use power regression, we use logistic regression. So each of those different sections um, that you have following section 1.4 will have different um, models that you're going to do. So we're going to do a linear regression model, so I'm going to choose linreg. Now, <clears throat> this is what my um, screen looks like. Yours might look different, um, but I have to tell it L1 and L2, and it tells me store regression. And I have to tell it that I want it to store inside of the, the, the y equation for y1. So I hit vars, y vars, function y1. And if I arrow down and I hit calculate, it will calculate my equation. Now it tells you this right here, y equals ax plus b, a is 15.5, b is 45.2. So it's really 15.5x plus 45.2. And the other thing is that if you hit y equals, you'll actually see it evaluated and plugged in. Um, all of our models, we're going to use three decimal points for, always three decimal points, okay? And as you're taking a look and you're working your way through this, if there's fewer than three, that's okay. But if you have more than three, we just round off to three decimal points. And this works the same way for any of the regressions. It will create the same kind of an equation. It looks different because different equations do different things. This is not going to fit for the kind of information I'm about to show you, but let me just show you what you do. Um, if you were calculating, let's say, a quadratic regression, you do quad reg. See the same L1, L2 regression equation, you tell it Y1, and you'd go down to calculate, and it would create equations. So there's the quadratic equation, there's the A, B, and C values. Um, <clears throat> you can still use the y equals after that to plug information into the table. There is one more thing actually I wanted to show you about this. Let me go back to doing my linear regression equation that this one was to begin with. Okay, so linreg y1. Okay, so here's my linear regression equation. Um, so one thing I can do, of course, is I can plug into the table. Oh, what is the you know amount that happens to be in 1999? Well, in 1999, that's nine years after 1990, and of course it gives me a 187 points, 184.7. 
The other thing that I can do is I can actually look for the year in which something happens. So right now I'm just gonna do a standard window. Um, actually, let me show you that. Let's see, zoom and option number, oops, zoom option number nine is zoom stat. It actually will show, I don't think I hit nine. Oh, my plot's off. I didn't show you how to do that, I'm so sorry. Hit Y equals, up here where it says plot one, you have to hit enter and turn plot one on, okay? So um, the other thing too is that you might actually have to set up that stop plot, and you can see where it says stop plot right here. So if you go second stop plot and you hit on, you can see that it's on and it's got dots, list L1, L2, and this is a mark. So make sure that that's set up if it doesn't work automatically. So we try it again, we're gonna hit zoom nine. And you can see it, it works really nicely. If you need the window to be bigger, you check window and you can extend the value of your window. Maybe you need your X max to go out to like 12 and your Y max to go up to say 200, right? So you can manipulate those in as much as you need to. Um, if you want to predict what it, when an output value will occur, you do that inside of Y equals. So let's say for instance, we wanted to know when the amount in millions would actually equal 200,000, or let's say 190, because that'll be my window. So this would be 190 right here. And then if you graph, you'll notice it crosses and that location where it crosses, the X value is the one that we're looking for. And the way that you find that is by hitting second calc and it's number five, intersect. It says first curve, that means the first equation. Well, that's Y1, so we hit enter. Second equation, you can see it says Y2, so we hit enter. When it says guess, you just need to get kind of close to the value more or less and hit enter. And then it will tell you that it's in 9.34. So you can either say 9.34 years after 1990, or you could say in 1999.